Welcome back to the channel, guys. We're back to work on the Vanderhall. Finally sorted out our wiring mess in this corner. Man, there is a ton of wiring, including the fuse box, bunched up into this one corner, along with the ECUs that run literally right next to the coolant lines that are almost pinching the coolant lines. Definitely a tight fit. And we just connected our fuel line down here to the bottom of the block. So now we need to grab some components in the Vanderhall, like this air box, the throttle body, the map sensor, and throw them on the top of the engine. Well, there we have it. The turbo and the intake is on. Picked up some of this tubing off eBay and made a little tube that had cracked on the turbo. We've got our intake bolted down along with all the wiring that runs to the map sensor and all these other sensors. Our turbo is on with all the lines installed, oil and the coolant lines. And we might be upgrading this turbo if the engine runs. Now we have a lot of suspension to do on that side of the Vanderhall and we have our axles to throw in. So we'll stop leaking trans fluid on the ground. And I did pick up some fresh trans fluid and oil for the Vandy. Well, let's get this thing off the cinder blocks, put some jacks stands underneath it and then pop these wheels off because we've got a specialty Vanderhall axle for the passenger side as this one is pretty done. So let's get this suspension sorted out. On the Vanderhall forum on Facebook, a lot of owners were saying these tie rod ends would bend after a lot of use. So we got some beefy ones that they recommended in the chat. All right, now it is time for our brand new Vanderhall axle. Right here we have the old one in all its glory. Now we're gonna crack open the new one. It's gonna go right behind all the suspension and slip into the transmission over there right now where it's leaking. But actually first we gotta figure out where this connector goes and I think it's right in that corner over there. No wonder I missed it up top. Bingo. Nice. And while we're down here, let's tighten in this exhaust. We're all good on the exhaust. Let's put that new axle in.
Well, the suspension on the passenger side's all dialed in, including changing out that broken knuckle. We even straightened out the fender because it was rubbing, and now, check it out. We'll torque the lug nuts once it's on the ground, but now let's move on to the driver's side. Our suspension is almost complete. The last piece we need to install is the sway bar. Now the sway bar originally mounts right in here and bolts directly to the frame, but as you guys know, we replaced all the aluminum on that side. So I've got the old twisted up frame bar here with the sway bar mounts. Here's one of them stuck to the old piece. So we're gonna take that sway bar and try to mount it to the front somehow. See what we can do, see what parts we can take off of it and try to make something work on the front of this Vanderhall. Well, we did our best to cut up that mangled subframe and kind of fit it to the front of the frame just so that we could crack open these two boxes, show you guys what we got, as well as that box right there from Mishimoto in the hopes that we will get to start the Vanderhall. Now here's a fun fact for you guys. Right here is a Vanderhall radiator for a 22 Venice GTS. And this radiator is directly from GM and it's for a 2016 Malibu with the very same 1.5 liter LFV engine. Now I did some research and some forms were saying that the radiator from the Chevy Malibu would work just fine. For the Vanderhall, you only need to cut off a few tabs. And as you can see on the Vanderhall radiator, there's no extra tabs on the side. And on the GM radiator, there's a tab here, tab here, but it has all the same ports for the trans and the coolant. Coolant, trans. And just like on that side, the GM radiator has a few extra tabs right here, and the Vanderhall radiator is pretty flat on the side here. So you do have to trim these tabs for it to fit in the Vanderhall if you were going completely back to stock. And this Vanderhall specific fan mounts perfectly to the GM radiator. So now let's see if we can finagle this radiator in the Vanderhall.
we have our whole cooling system right here, including a massive upgrade in the intercooler from the stock size. I am gonna have to figure out how to get that sucker on here though. Here are all our broken hoses, brand new hoses from Vanderhall, Mishimoto intercooler, OEM radiator with a Vanderhall fan, and tons of Mishimoto hoses and clamps. Somehow we gotta figure out all this and make it work. But first we gotta figure out that frame cause it's not wide enough, doesn't stick out far enough. So I can't mount any of the cooling system up yet. Maybe we'll buy a new radiator support from Vanderhall. I'm not sure yet. But it is pretty late here. So we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Long story short, we are just gonna get a new radiator support from Vanderhall. I wish I had the metal fabrication skills to build a custom radiator support with aluminum that we picked up previously, but who am I kidding? I don't. I want this to look good, so we're gonna go back to OEM. But in the meantime, I really wanna hear this thing run. So we've gotta put oil in it, then we've gotta put some trans fluid in it, close up the lines, and find out where the battery is, put power to this thing for the first time ever, and see if it cranks over. So we just closed off two important systems. We looped the trans lines together as well as the intercooler piping from the turbo all the way to the throttle body. There's no coolant in the system so we can leave these open. We are getting so close to putting some oil and trans fluid in this thing. I gotta get this broken exhaust off so it's not dragging on the ground. Then we're gonna drop this thing on all three wheels and then put some oil and trans fluid in the Vanderhall. All right, it is go time to put some power to this thing. Here are the keys that came with the Vanderhall. They are GM keys because Vanderhall uses the same immobilizer system that's in a lot of GMs. And these keys are for the glove box. Here goes our power. Here is our ground. All right, let's see if anything happens when we touch the button. Oh snap, turned yellow, it's just clicking. Well, I guess let's get in here, see if it cranks, put the foot on the brake. Oh, and these stains in the seat is actually blood from the previous owner. He reached out to me, told me exactly what happened to this thing. I think a bone in his leg broke, which is why there is a lot of dried blood on these seats. Anyway, more on that later. Foot is on the brake, tap the button. Oh, here we go. There's the fan switch. All right, we got power to this thing. Okay, engine light, 1,900 miles, that's crazy. Foot is on the brake, push it down. Just clicking, okay. Will not start, just clicking. Brights work, left turn signal, right turn signal. Brakes work. Some noises coming from the trans. I'm smelling fuel, just making sure there's no leaks anywhere. Oh shoot, we're leaking. Holy smokes. Not leaking anything under the car, but man, those injectors are leaking. All four of them. 
Well, good thing it's an issue on top that we can access. Before we deal with that, I'm gonna move on to getting the battery out, which I believe is behind this seat. And you can see more of the blood stains on the seat. Now the previous owner also told me that he did a modification to the passenger seat so you had easy access to the battery. I believe it's on some form of back two bolts out. I'm not sure how he did it, but it's really nice because then the battery is right back here. Also, you got some luggage compartment space back here. It's a little loose, but that thing is definitely shot. Let's get it out of here. Or right, we are in park. I can't push it. All right, we got the battery out. Nut on the positive side. We got a diehard gold battery. Got the battery on charge. I had to trick the charger with my jump pack to get this battery started charging because it is so dead. Now let's address our leaking injectors. Okay, so I just blew out all four cylinders with a little bit of compressed air. Pulled out the coil packs and the injectors. I don't know why these would be leaking. This middle brown piece has a hole on the backside if you guys are wondering about that gap. But all the gaps look fine. I'm not sure why they're leaking though. We're just gonna take these all apart and build them back up again. Well, 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 upon further inspection, if you look inside there, there's like a gray O-ring. Some of them were sideways because I bet I never took them out and put them on the injectors when we reinstalled these. So with a little pry tool, pop that O-ring out. This needs to go on the injector right on the top there. And then they're installed in the fuel rail. That should fix my issue. All right, you guys watch, I'm gonna turn the key over. Turning the key. Flips on the brake. No more leaking, let's try to crank it again. Jump pack says it's at 12 volts. Sounds like it doesn't have enough battery, but let's go through this wiring here while we let that battery charge, try to figure something out. So we just completed our wire repair on this sensor. I'm not sure what it's for, but the only things unplugged in the front right now are for the fan, this plug, which is for the boost sensor on the intercooler over there, and the headlights on both sides. And that is it. Nothing else is unplugged in the front. Battery has charged to 80%. Let's throw it in, throw a jump pack on it, and see what we get when we crank the Vanderhall. Can't get it to start. We're gonna scan it with the Autel MS909. I was looking for the OBD2 port under here, which is actually right there. And I found that there is a kicker system in here. Kicker. I don't think that's factory. So I think there might be some speaker upgrades on this thing, which is huge plus. Let's connect our interface. Powered on. Now I'm pretty confident my scan tool doesn't have Vanderhall in the option system, but this is based off of a Chevy Malibu chassis essentially. So we're gonna auto select Chevy, Chevrolet. We'll do automatic selection, see what happens. I am turning the key on by the way. Boom. No way, check that out. It actually read the VIN. Is that the legit VIN? Let's check. 003785. 003785. No way, that works. Oh failed decoding the VIN. I guess we have to do this manually. This is a 22 passenger car and Malibu. 
with the 1.5 liter LFV. We're at 11 volts right now. And boom, here we are pre-scanning the Vanderhall. 52 DTCs. Okay, there are a ton of codes. I'm gonna go out of here and clear them. Here we are in the post scan. We're at pretty low voltage, 10.2 now. Man, this is dropping fast. All right, now we're gonna quick erase, clear codes, and we'll see what comes back. Oh, I hear some clicking up there when it was clearing the codes. So we have no engine control module faults. Steering wheel angle sensor. We might be able to reset that in the control unit. And we're gonna go into the control unit and see if we can set that steering angle sensor. Steering wheel angle sensor learning. Steering wheel is straight. No way, it's actually doing it. Okay, gotta turn the ignition off open and close my driver door of course procedure is complete no way what is on the brake let's go might just be too low of battery honestly According to this post I found online that was the main breaker that we just reset look now you can see no power to the Vanderhall All right, new battery installed. I got high hopes. Put our foot on the brake. Here goes nothing. Oh, it cranks. So it was a battery issue. All right. You know what that means? We actually put this engine together correctly. We've got no coolant, so I can't run it for long. <laughs> Sounds good. Are we leaking anything? Since we had this motor completely apart, let's check the oil, because I'm sure we need to add some. We are at the very bottom of the dipstick, so let's add some oil. Barely moved up on the dipstick, let's add some more. Perfect, now we're halfway on the dipstick. Now let's see if that trans works. She runs, first little drive in the garage. Now we just gotta wait for that radiator support, throw the coolers in, and then we'll take it on its very first drive. Definitely a tough project for me. The next time you guys see this thing will be a first official drive. So we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.